You are listening to Chapter 1 of 5 of Canary, my debut novella. Enjoy. The chill of being fifteen kilometers in the air crept into Captain Carell's pressurized suit as Ordnance Officer Parika Peeps Pardeep waved that the breaching charge was set. Carell helped her back onto their dropship, and they drifted a few meters away. From where they hovered, the unit could see the edges of the floating city above the clouds, and on the horizon, they could make out the faint curvature of the Earth. The explosion was muffled by his helmet, but the blowback from the port depressurizing through the horse-sized hole reminded Corell of a tea kettle. The dropship redocked and the team climbed in. At the other end of the port's airlock chamber was a door, its auto-lock sensors triggered by their breach. Beyond that were a thousand car-sized power cells sitting in the loading bay. The blowback from that chamber could blast them back to meet their maker. Corell took point as his intelligence officer hacked the door's control panel while two other soldiers unfolded a temporary barrier that resembled a giant steel umbrella known as the plug. Ready when you are, Cap. Intelligence officer Ty Curry, courier, reported to Corell. Everyone cram in, Corell ordered and the team huddled on either side of the door in two groups of three. Curry, in three, two, one. With a tap on the control panel, the door snapped open and a gust of wind repressured the dock. With a collective sigh of relief, the team moved into the loading bay. As they moved around a power cell, a loud groan came from behind. Corell shouted, SHUT THE DOOR! They heard a snap as the plug collapsed out of the end of the port. The team was sucked back toward the doorway along with some unsecured cells. Corell slammed into the wall next to Ty and barely grabbed the arm of the person flying past him. PEEPS! Corell shouted. The other three were blown out into the atmosphere. Corell tried to pull his OO back in, but a cell flew by, severing the woman from her arm and knocking her into oblivion as it slammed flat over the hole in the outer door. The wind slowed to a whistle. Ty slapped the control panel and the inner door slammed shut, leaving the two men staring at the stump in Corell's hands. The captain threw the arm on the floor and cursed. Fuck! When I find the asshole who gave us that broken plug, I'm going to shove it up their ass! A power cell fell over, and the crash caused the two men to instinctively snap their rifles toward the noise. After a tense moment, Ty lowered his rifle. Carry on, sir? Carry on, Curl sighed. The two remaining men moved to the exit of the bay and out into the silent city. In a formation that resembled a game of tactical leapfrog, they took turns taking point from street to street, building to building, and room to room. Now and then, they'd spot someone running away in the distance. Eventually, they made their way into a building resembling an upside-down pyramid. Inside of a server room, the two paused at the city's central computer. Ty sat down at the main terminal and pulled two hard drives out of his bag. Corell looked out over the city through a reinforced landscape window. You don't think the people here found a way to weaponize the city's defense systems, do you, Cap? Ty asked from behind the monitor. You know that's impossible, Curry, Corell grunted. Remind me again, for my own comfort. Keep a strong jaw, officer. Please? Ty's eyes reflected in the window, and Corell sighed. All right, but keep scanning for Jack's files. Corell looked out over the dark buildings under the dome of the city's ceiling. All Sky Cities under the North American Alliance are armed with exterior auto cannons as a last resort if the escorts are compromised. I'm not too worried about the exterior guns. Look. Curry. All the ships are still in the hangar bay, and Intel reported that they are intact. No weapons have been stripped. These are just people picketing for wage increases. Increases the government can afford in this economy. Intel reports can be inaccurate. You would know better than me. In the distance, Krell spotted a figure running between the shadows of buildings. The figure carried a large cylinder. Speaking of Intel reports, I leaned closer to the monitor. 
These files were supposed to be scanning. Some of them looked suspicious. Corell hurried over to stand behind Ty and squinted at the monitor. Suspicious how? Suspicious enough that I had to run Jack's file sweeper. Ty tapped a drive that had yet to be plugged in, which bared the symbol of North America with the words North American Alliance circling it. Just be sure to copy those files regardless. A rocket shattered the window and knocked Corell on his back. Glass shards bounced off their face masks and stuck in their armored vests. Corell jumped up and assessed the situation. Copy those files, Corell shouted as he ran to the door. He slammed it shut as Ty plugged in the government hard drive. Another rocket sailed through the window and exploded on the opposite wall. Just give me 90 seconds, Cap, Ty shouted from behind the monitor. Corell ran to the window and fired down into the street where the figure with the cylinder primed another RPG. As the assailant collapsed, shots hammered at the door. Corell saw another figure run to the RPG and he shot them down too. Someone opened the door and fired wildly into the room. Corell gunned them down and reloaded as he charged the door. After spraying his clip into the hall, he leaned out, smashed the outer control panel with the butt of his rifle, and leapt back in as the door slammed shut. That should hold them for two minutes, Corell shouted to a slumped tie. Corell ran over to where the I.O. hunched over a monitor that read, 60 seconds remaining. Hurry! Corell grabbed Ty by the vest and pulled him back. Blood dribbled from Ty's arm as he pointed at the monitor and gasped. <coughs> Just another minute, Cap. Carry on, son. Corell pulled a strip of gauze and a cotton patch out of his vest. He swiveled Ty to face the door and began to wrap a bandage around the young man's wound. Ty propped up his rifle with his good arm and gritted his teeth. A ding sounded from the monitor, and before Ty could move, Corell snapped the two hard drives up and tucked the government one into Ty's backpack and the other into his own pocket. With a heave, Corell threw Ty's bad arm over his shoulder and hauled him to the window. Corell sprayed bullets into the streets below to discourage any potential attacks, then threw himself and Curry into the darkness below. With a thud, the two men landed three meters below on a rooftop. Corell yanked a radio off of his belt and shouted, Corell to Deadwing, do you read? Static chirped back, Pilot of Deadwing, copy. Pigeon, I don't know whose idea it was to send my squad into this hellhole, but we need backup. Corell dragged Ty under the inverted slant of the central computer building, providing them temporary cover on the rooftop. Copy that. What's the situation, Captain? Mary Pigeon Pettigrew asked. It's just me and Curry. That's the fucking situation. Get another squad in here. The civilians are armed. I repeat, the civilians are fucking armed and fucking hostile. Ty shot at someone leaning out of the shattered window above them. Copy that, Captain. But we're the only ship up here. This was supposed to be a cleanup mission. Get back up or I'll clean your ass with my boot. Corell heaved and the two men fell onto the street below. With a sprained ankle and a string of curses, Corell hobbled Ty into the nearest doorway. Finding themselves in a cantina, Corell barricaded the door with a table. They paced the room to secure any other entrances. After the two men were tightly bunkered down, Ty gazed out a window and huffed. Think we'll hold till someone arrives, Cap? Crow leaned on the opposite wall of Ty and nodded at a civilian reloading the RPG. Carry on, soldier. Relief Squad Omicron inbound. Chirped from Corell's radio. Inside the cantina, Corell and Ty slumped on opposite walls. Between them lay bodies of civilians that spilled through a blown out window. Weapons that were torn from escort ships smoldered among puddles of blood. Bullet casings and discarded ammo clips marked the trails from the window to the two men's feet. Copy that, Corell sighed into the radio. Ty laughed. <laughs> they missed the party. Ty coughed through a broken face mask. The cough turned into a gut-wrenching fit as the I.O. doubled over. Corell stood up and hobbled over the young man. <coughs> you sick, Curry? Just <coughs> a cough, sir. Corell thumbed a button on his radio. Pigeon, please tell me Omicron has a medic worth a damn. Affirmative, Captain, chirped the woman's voice. Hold tight, I'll send them your way ASAP. They should meet little resistance. I think we killed every fucker in this place. Copy that. Hold tight, Curry. We'll get you bouncing in no time. Corell slumped down beside Ty and patted him on the shoulder. A woman leapt through the window and toppled over the pile of bodies. She held an improvised knife and began to rush the men. Corell raised his pistol and fired a single shot through her upper arm. All this <coughs> for over a wages dispute? Ty gasped. 
Earl threw away his empty gun and drew his knife from his shoulder scabbard. Something tells me there's a few positions to fill in this shithole city. The two men coughed up exhausted chuckles, and the woman coughed up blood. This <coughs> is about the people, the woman choked out. Well, sweetheart, Carl lifted his face mask and pulled an electronic cigarette out of his pocket. Your people killed my people. The woman laughed, causing her to cough up more blood. Now you both are exposed. Enjoy having half a lung to breathe with. <coughs> if you don't die. What are you talking about, bitch? Ty coughed. The woman laughed and retched again. You already have the... <coughs> you already have the cough. You'll probably... <coughs> You'll probably die if it's infecting you this fast. Fuck you, lady. Carl puffed dismissively at her. War dogs in the military. A broken soldier is a liability. A fixed soldier is an asset. That's why we get the free health care. The woman threw her improvised knife half heartedly at Carl. Fuck off. Half the world will die. And you dogs will have to bury the bones. Half. <coughs> half the world is already dead, Ty said. Our parents died so the world could have these cities, and you just had to go and fight. I'm talking about the new virus, the woman yelled. It's like Ebola and anthrax had a baby dipped in bleach. Your lungs <coughs> are already infected, kid, and your captain here will be <coughs> just like you in a few hours. And Ty and Crow looked at each other with wide eyes. Ty immediately pulled out an EpiPen from a pocket and bit off the cap. Adrenaline will only... <coughs> Accelerate it, kid. Best thing you can do is stay calm. The woman laughed until she retched, then crawled over the bodies in an attempt to escape, her laughter trailing further behind than the blood. Fuck, Captain. What are we gonna do? Ty's hand shook with the raised EpiPen. The two men heard footsteps from outside the cantina and watched as Omicron came stepping in over the piles of bodies. Crow put a hand on Ty's shaking fist and lowered it. We carry on, Curry. We carry on. Carell sat up in his hospital bed with a violent cough. His eyes were puffing, his nose ran like it was in a marathon. Behind a curtain in a bed of his own, Carell heard Ty hacking through a much more violent, much more wet cough. Are you choking up a lung yet, Curry? Carell laughed with the pain. A gurgle and a splat was all Carell got in response as a dark splotch hit the curtain. Krell stood up and yanked it back to find Ty doubled over with blood dripping down his face and hands. With another cough, Ty sprayed blood on Krell's hospital gown. He held Ty up with one arm before slapping the call button on the side of the bed. Someone get in here! Curry is dying! Krell clasped Ty's hands and wrapped a strong arm around the young man's shoulders. Hold strong, Curry. Hold strong. Ty's eyes streaked with panic and tears as he coughed into Krell's chest. RNs covered in layers of airtight clothing rushed into the room moments later. We need a respirator in room 114, one of them shouted into a wrist-mounted comm. And bring anesthetic. You're gonna put him under? Carell barked. He needs to lie still for an operation, sir. His lungs are deteriorating rapidly, and he'll need lab-grown replacements. Jesus, will he live through that? We can get him on an operating table, maybe. Maybe? We've only been growing his organs since we got to this shit city, so they're underdeveloped. Fuck, seriously? You'll be a grown-ass man with 12-year-old lungs. Now can you sit down and let us do our job? Corell sat down on his bed as he watched his comrade convulse. Ty coughed up more lung tissue on the RNs. The captain brought his own elbow to his mouth and coughed until tears came out of his eyes and mucus ran down his sleeve. Two more staff ran in with equipment. One strapped a respirator over Ty's face while the other wheeled in a gurney. Then all four lifted Ty onto it. Three wheeled him out and one stayed behind and turned to Corell. Do you need anything, sir? Corell waved them off. Just <coughs> take care of Curry. He's the last of my unit. We will, but can I get you anything? Yeah, painkillers and a tissue. Corell laughed as he wiped snot on his sleeve. But seriously, bring me the report when Curry recovers, or don't come back here at all. The RN turned to leave, but Corell snapped his fingers and gestured for them to wait while he coughed again. <coughs> Sorry to be an ass. Could you give me a tablet? I need to write a mission report while I'm stuck in this death trap of a ward. I'll see what I can do. The RN left Corell alone, and the sick man crawled up to fight off another coughing fit. 
He reached under his pillow and withdrew Ty's spare hard drive, then tucked it back and patted the pillow with a sigh of exhaustion. <sighs> Bro logged into a FaceTime app on the tablet and answered an incoming call. An older man appeared and greeted him. Captain Malik Carell. Chief Master Sergeant James Joseph Johnson. Carell saluted. To what do I owe this privilege, Jack? It looks good for P.R. to check in on my sick officers, the CMS joked. You always were one to cut the bullshit, Jack. Carell laughed. How are you doing? My lungs feel like I snorted sawdust, but I'm getting better. They told me there was a 50-50 chance of survival. I guess Curry got the other 50. Sorry to hear that, Carell. I'm told he's recovering. Yeah, but he won't be able to breathe right until his new lungs catch up to the rest of his body. The doctors are giving him steroids to boost the growth. That's good. Apparently there's more on that city than disgruntled workers. Apparently there's more in this place than the next Black Death. Just how many experiments are they running up here, Jack? The CMS side. This is the best isolated facility we have for maintaining biological research. Even airborne pathogens find it hard to survive the cold of 15 kilometers. Someone could have told me that before my unit walked into this death trap. Four got blasted out of an airlock, and the last one is barely able to breathe. I'm sorry for the loss of your team, the older man sighed. But we couldn't risk everyone knowing what the government keeps up there. Did any of their parachutes save them? No, nah, like I said, not much survives 15 kilometers. Rell coughed and fought back another fit, but the tear in his eye wasn't from the effort. I'm guessing Curry and I won't survive much longer than, will we? We didn't kill them, Corral. The fall did. They were all hit with a power cell and weren't in any condition to pull their chutes. Uh-huh. Okay. Corral fought back his anguish. But where does that leave me and Curry? How successful was your mission? It's like that. I'm afraid so, son. Corral took a moment to breathe. We killed everyone in the city that didn't die of this fucking virus. And we have your data on the hard drive. Where's the hard drive now? In Curry's backpack, sir. And have you or Officer Courier had a chance to review the files? No, sir. Corell felt the lump under his pillow where he had tucked the extra hard drive. We nearly died just getting them downloaded. And our gear was confiscated upon arrival to this hospital ward. So you haven't been able to access a terminal and confirm that all the data was transferred completely? Sir, I only got this tablet minutes ago. You're the first person I've seen since Ty coughed up his lungs. So no, I haven't been to a terminal. Okay, consider this your debriefing. I'll have someone retrieve the drive from the hospital and review it myself. When Ty recovers, thank him for his service. We'll have a medal for both of you when you get home. Thank you, sir. Carell saluted half-heartedly. Dismissed. The CMS logged off. Carell cursed and breathed heavily until he regained some composure. After a moment, he put in another call through the app. Soon, a brunette in a suit answered. Agent Miss Maisel of the Bureau of Military Internal Affairs speaking. Do you have an inquiry to open? Krill left. I'll open an inquiry into your internal affairs, Tiff. Agent Tiffany Maisel chuckled. Wow, I don't see you for a week and those are your first words to me? Sorry, sweetheart. I'm a little off my game. I caught a bug while up here. Oh shit, are you going to be okay? Tiffany asked, concerned. I'm recovering and we'll be home soon. I miss you. I miss you too, babe. Is everything gonna be okay up there? No. Most of my crew got smashed by a flying battery and Ty got a lung infection. He's the only one left. Fuck, babe. Like, holy shit. Yeah, and Jack personally debriefed me. Jack? Tiffany looked confused. Above my pay grade, Jack. CMS Johnson. Holy shit, for real? What did Jack have to say to you? Just checking in on his wounded soldiers. Looks good for PR, I guess. Wow. What was that like? I don't think he likes me. Fuck, is this going to delay you getting home? Nah, he just debriefed me. I should be home soon. Okay, babe. Tiffany bit her lip in concern. I love you. Love you too. Just need to check in. And I have something for you to look into. As soon as Ty feels better, we'll fly back. Oh, and Jack said we have medals waiting for us. Oh, nice. I take it the mission went well? 
If you consider losing four of my best people going well, yeah. Fuck, babe. Sorry. I didn't mean- It's okay, dear. It's a lot to take in. Let's plan a nice evening once I get back. I could use some R&R &R with my girl. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm working right now, but... Tiffany looked around to make sure no one was watching, then mime fellatio. Grell threw his head back with laughter. You're the best, babe. He mimed going down on her and chuckled. I'll see you soon. See you soon. Back to work for me. Grell smiled as her face lingered for a second after hanging up. The dropship with the name Deadwing emblazoned on the side departed from the floating city. In the trooper bay, Grell and Ty sat next to one another and watched the dome-shaped city covered in wind turbines and solar panels disappear as they dipped into the clouds below. Now leaving City 143, Pigeon said over her mic. I hope you boys enjoyed your stay. Got enough painkillers, Curry? Corral asked Ty. Enough to kill me. Ty shook a large bottle of pills like a maraca. I'll consider it a parting gift from medical. They didn't hook you up with that opioid shit, did they? <coughs> Corral's cough became a cough. It's 2021, Cap. That ship's not popular anymore. You never know who's pushing what these days. It's fine. Just some anti-inflammatories. And good old CBD. Alright. What's bothering you, Cap? Nothing, Curry. Just the hum of anti-gravity engines always made me feel sick. Really? I find it comforting. Ty sat back, ready to sleep. They make me restless. Shame. I almost snuggled up to the thrumming steel walls. I could pass out in here. Not if you got the debriefing I got from Jack. CMS, Jack? Ty shot up. No. Grell tapped his mic and looked toward the cockpit. Are you listening, ladies and gents? Loud and clear, came Pigeon's voice. Ty leaned forward. I got a FaceTime with Chief Master Sergeant Johnson, Grell said. Ty blinked and snapped his head back in response. A whistle came through the female pilot's mic. A bit high up for us, isn't he, Cap? She asked. Yeah, Grell continued. He let me know that we did a good job. Despite the losses, the mission was accomplished. What about the files? Ty looked wide-eyed at Krell. What files? Krell said more than asked. Understood. Ty leaned back, disappointed. As far as we're concerned, the mission was to neutralize a wage dispute, and we met heavy civilian resistance. I'll say, the pilot snorted. These look like shit. Thanks, Krell rolled his eyes. Just warning you. Our debriefing may not be just bullshit talk and paperwork. There was a tense silence from the crew. It may be more like an interrogation. Krell waited for everyone's response. We know nothing, Ty nodded and leaned back. We know nothing, Pigeon echoed. Just a neutralization with unforeseen resistance, the pilot said after a second. Unforeseen resistance. Krell sighed and sat back, trying to ignore the thrum coming through the walls. The dropship flew on in silence. Thank you for listening to Chapter 1 of Canary. Please like and subscribe. The best thing you could do is share this video. If you would like to support more works like this, consider joining my Patreon. Thank you, and goodbye.